Heinrich is the spokesperson for the Israeli Prime Minister's office. She joins us now. First of all, what can we expect from tomorrow's conversation with Prime Minister Netanyahu and President Biden? Well, Lauren, thank you for having me on. Uh, you see Washington and Jerusalem are in constant contact, uh, have been throughout the war. We do see eye to eye in uh, the big scheme of things, the necessity to eliminate Hamas, to make sure that Gaza will never pose a terror threat to Israel again, as was the case uh, on October 7th. And the urgency to bring back all 134 hostages home. So uh, we've been holding discussions uh, with our American counterparts. Uh, we're very thankful for the administration for the global moral clarity they have demonstrated since October 7th. So we'll have to wait and see um, and maybe speak tomorrow about the phone call. What would you say Netanyahu's focus would be for this phone call? Well, uh, again, we will have to wait and see. Uh, we keep discussing the war objectives as uh, we define them in Israel. There is an overwhelming uh, support for these war objectives in Israel. And according to polls, also a solid majority of Americans understand the necessity to eliminate Hamas. As we are uh, working and making a tremendous progress towards these goals, um, it is also very much important to us that civilian care of the Palestinian civilians in Gaza will also be at the top of mind. This is why we increased uh, and we keep increasing and, and working on, on bettering the um, aid distribution uh, mechanism that we have in place. Uh, there are more food trucks, for instance, entering uh, Gaza since October 7th than, than before the war on an average daily basis. And this is by part thanks to our cooperation with international partners. Yes, and that includes uh, the, the United States, but also uh, these aid groups that um, unfortunately uh, one of them uh, had experienced this um, terrible tragedy that uh, you just um, showed in the previous segment. We'll get to aid in a second. I want to ask you about Netanyahu's response to calls for an early election, uh, saying, quote, in, in a remark, calls for elections now during the war, a moment before victory will paralyze Israel for at least six months, in my estimate, for eight months. Does Netanyahu believe he can usher a, quote, victory, listing all of the things he just listed, defeating Hamas, bringing hostages home, within six months? Well, listen, politics is one thing and the national uh, effort that we have underway to defeat Hamas is another thing. Right now, uh, most Israelis, the majority in, in my country, we're not dealing with politics right now. There will be time for politics. There will be time to hold elections. We have we are a democratic country and we have procedures in place of how uh, this uh, should unfold when the Knesset, our parliaments decide so. Um, there are protests, very minimal one uh, around uh, across Israel, and, and that is because the majority of Israelis are really united vis-a-vis uh, -vis this brutal enemy called Hamas that we all want to defeat and bring our hostages, our stolen people back home. Because uh, Lauren, when they targeted us, you know, on October 7th, and as they and Hezbollah continue to fire missiles at us all the time, uh, they didn't care. They don't care who voted for which party, who wanted who was prime minister. Um, so this is why we are united in, in this fight right now. World Central Kitchen says the Israeli military had been informed of the aid workers movement and at least one vehicle was clearly marked with the charity's logo. We all saw the, the image of that. How can an accident like this happen? This is what we're investigating right now. It is a tragedy, accidents, uh, tragedies tend to happen during wars. And just to remind you and the viewers, it's not a war that we started. It's not a war that we wanted. It's a war that we must fight if we want to live. And if we don't want Hamas to live another day to carry out another October 7th massacre. So uh, we extend our condolences to uh, the families of those aid workers. Uh, one of my colleagues calls them uh, the unsung heroes of armed conflicts and, and to their countries as well. Uh, the findings of our investigation, and it shouldn't take too long. It's a matter of uh, days and weeks Weeks. We're not talking about months now. Um, they will be made public. We will share them with the public. We will share them with uh, the WCK and other aid organizations because uh, we all want the same. We want this important aid to reach the civilians of Gaza. Unlike Hamas, we want to minimize their suffering as a result of their actions. Hamas are interested in maximizing the suffering. You mentioned working with aid groups. 
We spoke with an aid group yesterday, uh, Oxfam specifically, about what it's like for them to get their aid, which specifically is centered on water, um, you know, mechanisms for people to be able to use the restroom. And here's what he described uh, that process being like. I want you to listen to this. We have key parts that are not being allowed into Gaza. And I'm, I'm talking about things like water testing kits. I'm talking about things like water treatment kits. Um, desalination units that are that take salty water and allow it to be safe for people. Mm -hmm. These are all being held up at the border in Gaza. We're not being allowed to bring them in. And when held up one of who? these is identified in a whole truck who by the Israeli it? authorities, by the Israeli one authorities. of them is being held. That's right. The Israeli when the, and when the Israeli authorities find a single item in a truck that's prohibited, the whole truck gets turned around. Why are water testing kits, water treatment kits, desalination, excuse me, units prohibitive? Well, first of all, that is not true. There are specific dual use items that are being rejected. And even if something is being uh, rejected at the border for, you know, very clear reasons, if it's something that can be dual used for terrorism purposes, um, then uh, very uh, only 1.5% of those trucks that uh, are being uh, inspected at our borders are being rejected. And even then they are being re-administered, re-coordinated at a later stage. So uh, that, that, is, that, that is the data that, that I have these are the facts on the ground. Um, so again, there's there concern of, trucks, of terrorists uh, getting their hands Gaza on today water than before the war. More. Let, let me ask calories, you. Let me ask you if I can interject here and ask you a question. What about if you're saying that there, there's this no is an effort to not get aid into the hands of terrorists? I understand that. What is the the concern around water desalination, water testing kits? What what is the issue with that? I can't hear you. I mean, okay. the, the connection is breaking off, but yeah. um, if, I'll ask, if my, I'll ask the question me, again. I'll, I'll just, can, can you repeat? Yes, I can ask it again. I'm asking if this is a matter of these items being potentially put into the hands of Hamas, what about water desalination kits or testing kits, these specific objects that were described, you know, in that clip, what is the concern? I know that's as far as I know, and I'll have to ask and get back to you. As far as I know, some of these have entered the Gaza Strip uh, following our inspection. There's no, there's no. Uh, people have to understand. There's there has been no restrictions since October 7th on the amount of medical supplies, food, and water that can enter the Gaza Strip. There's no problem with getting the aid inside Gaza. The challenge is to get the aid around Gaza, more specifically to the north, where you still have about 10 to 15 percent of the population and. This is why we're working on uh, better solutions with our international partners, with the Biden administration, with uh, uh, you know uh, these aid groups to better the aid distribution mechani mechanism for which Israel is not responsible. But we want to better it um, because we want the aid to reach the civilian population. I guess you know from what he was describing, he was frustrated, and this is why I, I am hitting on this point a little bit more mm -hmm. that one object or one item that was deemed prohibitive by Israeli uh, you know, forces at that point would turn around the whole truck. So when you say there's an effort to make sure that the aid keeps flowing, but then one item causes a whole truck with aid on it to turn around, how does that square? So so let me explain how how it works. Um, you know, uh, very often, I mean, almost every day, there there's a equipment aid. Uh, the amount of hundreds of trucks on the Gazan side of the border, including right now, waiting to be distributed. Israel's job is one: we inspect the trucks coming in, but the backlog is not on our side of the border. We have the capacity to inspect. I think it's about 44 uh, trucks per hour. Uh, so the, again, this is why. I'm I'm saying that the distribution of the aid mechanism uh, is on the other side, the Gazan side, and this is what we should work on bettering with our international partners. Uh, most of the, and really, it's a really tiny friction of those trucks that are being rejected, if they're being rejected, and even then, they're being re-coordinated for a later time, and, 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 and there's a backlog on the Gazan side. 30 seconds here. My producers will get mad at me. Um, what is Israel's plan to expand land routes for aid to come through? 
Well, we uh, first there's the, the the pier. You know, it's 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 a uh, by land, by sea, by air. Just today, 266 trucks entered. Uh, Is there Gaza. a plan to expand um, more? I think 30 of them reached northern Gaza. You had uh, you know hundreds of, of thousands of airdrop meals. Is there a plan to, to expand the in more the routes? northern part of Gaza? So we're working. That there's another route that we expanded it's called the 60 uh, the 96 rather gate that uh, was opened there was a test that they ran and th th there are uh, procedures that, that we are considering um, but we really really according to the UN own numbers by the way we have increased the capacity to facilitate the, the uh, provision of aid Tal Heinrich spokesperson for the Israeli Prime Minister's office thank you for your time and folks we'll be right back